Hey class, Mr. G here going over plaster bats today and how you can recycle your clay. Okay, so I was trolling around on Facebook. I like I like using Facebook, going through all the message boards for art teachers and artisans uh, across the world. And somebody put a post on there about using plaster bats or how do you make these large plaster slabs to recycle clay and use for additional things for work. And you can use this for paper making. You can use it for, again, recycling clay. Uh, just if you wanna weigh down papers, uh, if you need to dry things out, or uh, you could even use this for printing or, um, or if you're doing a casting elements or if you want to carve into it and use these like little uh, design design pieces for, for plaster, it's all the same process. So I'm going to teach you guys how to go, how to make big ones, little ones, and all those in between. Okay, so for me, and recycling clay is one of the most important things why I use the plaster slabs. So back here, I've got some of my slabs. So I use these slabs for a lot of different things. However, recycling clay de definitively is the most important thing for me. Uh, and what we're doing is we're drying out that, that bit of plaster so we can lay down on our clay so that we can recycle it out to draw out some of that moisture so then we can put it through the pug mill, recycle it out. But again, these are used to dry things out. So again, if you have a paper piece, if you wanna make different sizes, different thicknesses, they all work the same way in the same process. So today we're gonna to be building these and how you use them for your class. Now for this, you're gonna need some basic materials to use. For one, you definitely need a drill. It just makes your life a lot easier. Over here, we've got a power cord a jiffy whisk now these you can get at home depot lowe's um i have a pottery supply house that stocks these uh you don't now some of them are slightly different some of them are about this long uh and then they'll be like a yellow like a hard iron like tube uh and, but again it has like a little mixer bit at the end um if you want to get real old school i've even hooked a um uh, like a really good strong kitchen whisk to my drill and it works fine it's um takes a little longer to break stuff up because uh, these have like, I don't want to call them knives, but they, they slice through the plaster and through the clay a lot easier. Uh, now for your pieces that you're going to make the plaster into, uh, if you want to go real dirt cheap, the lid off of a paper box will work just fine. I have these um, fiberglass, like polyurethane fiberglass mesh bins that you have in the classroom and then a couple of the trash bags now nice thing uh, my district we have these blue recycle bags uh it's easy these are great for plaster these are great for clay they're great to just keep in the classroom so that we can store our pieces all right so what we're going to be doing is we're going to measure out a section of plaster mix it with water mix that with the jiffy mixer pour it into the bat pour it into the mold to create our plaster bat and but the big thing is is make sure that those air bubbles are taken out beforehand so that way while it sets up and dries it's drying and uh creating a nice smooth layer uh, for plaster okay so in front of me we got a couple things for mixing uh laffy taffy container um if your school does any sort of fundraising thing sometimes they have these containers around i try and grab these when uh instead of them throwing away because i will use these in class now this isn't going to be an exact precise measurement however just the basics of mixing plaster you want about a 50 50 mixture some people say do a 60 40 where it's 60 percent plaster 40 percent water i like 50 50 half and half just because that gives me a little more dry time so that while i'm making it if i want to smooth it out change it anyway that gives me a little more time to fix it before it's set um, and I always try and get one that is slightly larger than the previous one because in case, in case you make extra plaster, it will pour over into the plastic, plastic container just fine. Now, 
The big thing with using plaster in these containers is it is not going to stick. It does not stick to plastic. You can pull it right off um, with the bags as well as um, these containers. You can kind of whack at the sides a little more and it will release on its own. You don't have to add a releasing agent. Now, if you're making a plaster cast, Vaseline, Pam spray will act as the deterrent and it will pull the plaster away from itself. You can use anything like that to, to aid in that if that makes it life easier for you. Me, I just use the plastic and just over and done with in one step. Now, measurements. Taking care of your plaster over time. I keep my plaster in a uh, plastic bag. And the reason that we keep it in plastic is so that moisture and air doesn't get into the plaster because that will dry out the plaster and turn in one big block of nastiness and it just doesn't work right when you're trying to actually make something with it so if you're not using it do wrap it up tightly make sure it is sealed most plaster bags it's that uh, paper exterior but there's a plastic liner inside of it it's again it's to deter moisture from interacting with the plaster so if you have a more moist environment like right now for us it's been raining for like the last two weeks and i want to make sure that this stuff stays fresh wrap it in the plaster bag make sure that you're not getting additional moisture into it no atmosphere changes are happening to the plaster because that creates a chemical reaction with which causes the plaster to turn into the big block that it does. Uh, and you don't wanna have that wasted and then you have to throw a whole bag of plaster away. Now there are ways that you can turn this stuff back into a powder. It involves a kiln and a lot of like varying heat factors. You can do it, I don't recommend it. It just does it, it's not easy. Now for me, I'm poor, so we use yogurt cups. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this container up about halfway so you guys can see this is a dust material and because it's a dust material you don't want to breathe it in so you should be wearing a mask i'm not because well you guys can't see my gorgeous face if i cover it up with a mask so today only we're doing this without uh without hazard gear but just for future sake make sure you guys wear a mask now as you guys are filling this up as i do at home when i'm making pancakes shimmy it a little bit so that i get a nice even layer that way i can know that i'm filling it up halfway not exceeding that halfway point again just filling it up with plaster shimmy to the halfway point looks good now when i add water i'm going to add water to right about here so that when i fill real quickly i'm going to plug in my drill okay so at this point i've got my drill set i've got my plaster ready and i've got my bin that I'm going to be putting the plaster into off to the side. I notice how I put a plastic bag over, put the uh, the bin inside the plastic bag. And the reason we do that again, that's the release agent. Now this bin is plastic-esque. It might stick, it might not stick. However, I want that security feature of knowing that it's not going to do that taken care of here. Now you could, and I've done this in the past, I've lined it with saran wrap and I've used the saran wrap kind of as a sling. And once the plaster is set, I'll pull the sling out and set it off to the side. That works perfectly fine too. So if you don't have this saran wrap or plastic wrap also works. <clears throat> now for me, because I don't want to ruin everything I'm wearing, apron time. All right. Now adding the water in, You know what? This is going to be a little haphazard for me, so I'm not going to use that. That's why we have jugs of water that we keep in the plastic in, on the on my tables as well. The reason I keep these jugs out is so that if my students need just a little bit of water for a cup, they can just grab a, a little bit of the water from the jug, pour it in one of the cups next to their where their workstation is. Again, we got those yogurt cups. Uh, I've got little soft cups that I've had restaurants donate. Makes it easy and easy to work with. So I'm just adding regular water into the plaster. Again, just going to fill it up about halfway. Man, remember, you want that 50-50 mixture. Now, again, once the plaster is wet and moistened, that dust is not there, it does not become a hazard, it's not still hazardous. Although, if you have a mask, I'd keep it on just in case. Gonna blitz. Doesn't take long. However, you will have a frothy uh, top on top of your plaster. So when you pour it in, we do wanna kinda, we're gonna settle that in just a second. Pop out those air bubbles. So pouring in the plaster, got some in the corner still, just add a little more water. Now to mitigate any air bubbles on the top, use a spray bottle and just gonna lightly mist across the surface. Try and keep it fluid and fast. 
and that's gonna sep take off the air bubbles. Yes, it does add a little water to it, but it's okay. And as it starts to dry, if you did add too much water, you will notice that the water is gonna rise to the top. If that happens, wait until it's settled enough to where if you move the plaster, it's not gonna shift in the tub or in the container that you're working in. Uh, and you can pour off the water after that or dip it to a corner and then use a small cup or spoon to ladle out the extra water. That always uh, is a factor. So if that's the case, that's all you gotta do. However, it doesn't matter because the plaster that's in here, the chemicals that are having the reaction are gonna have the reaction regardless. That little bit of water that's on the top, you can pour off later, you can pour off the next day. Uh, do give your plaster a couple days to cure out them. That's the only thing that I do recommend. Uh, until the plaster is bone dry, it's that kind of ashy texture on the outside uh, where there is no more moisture in it. If it's anything to cold to the touch, if it's cold to the touch at all, there's gonna be some water still in there. So when I'm working with plaster bats and I'm using it for clay or I'm using it for, um, or I've just made one, until it is completely uh, dry, wait until it's completely dry before you start working with it again. Now, some people want to finish these off and clean up the edges. You can get a plaster rasp. It looks like a really cool cheese grater, but it's like only like the size of my palm. Uh, I use that when I'm shaving ceramic pieces down as well. Uh, you can use that to finish off the sides if you want a nice smooth side. Uh, but then once the piece is cured, you can carve into it, you can gouge into it, you can put plaster on clay on it to dry out, paper dry out, or any other aspects that you need for your class. Hey class, I, I hope that you enjoyed class today. Again, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please raise your hand down in the comments below and your homework. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. And as always, I will see you guys next class. Later guys. It is so not level. Maybe I'll make like a mini skate park or something fun, or got this knobby texture, maybe carve or, or put some, use it to make something.